Alrighty guys, so today what I wanted to talk through was collision detection. That's something that I mentioned that I was going to have a look at next in the last video, so hopefully I'm not disappointing here by doing so. What we are looking at at the moment is the spaceship that you fly at the moment can literally just go through anything in the game. And that's not a very good feeling, clearly. Now, collision detection is incredibly complicated. You can look at the spaceship as it is. And there we go, we're just kind of going straight through the, the asteroid. Um, collision detection, if you want to get a 100% accurate or correct, I mean, there's a lot of things going on there, right? There's the fact that objects are moving, they could be rotating, and then the objects themselves could be very complicated shapes. What happens when these very complicated shapes hit each other? How do they bounce off of each other? All that kind of stuff. So very complicated. What we're going to do here is do something very simple. But what I definitely want us to be able to do is to be able to kind of land on an asteroid and then the asteroid's kind of rotating around and you get a sense of the, the kind of the, the universe around you while you're kind of chilling on this asteroid. And that, yeah, it's just from a look perspective, from a feel perspective, I think that's pretty awesome. And that's kind of the goal for this simple exercise. Uh, once we get to the end of it, which will probably take a little while, but uh, that that's kind of the major goal Clearly a minor goal will be something a little bit simpler so What I had in mind was why don't we just instead of trying to do very complicated objects hitting each other and trying to work out the exact intersection points and how they interfere or interact with each other Why don't we just do simple shapes instead? And so my first thought was, okay, well, the most simple shape I can think of is probably going to be a sphere or box. So let's do spheres because they're kind of quite, you know, I've already have a model set for a sphere. Obviously the planet itself is exactly that. So I might as well just run with that, use that model as the visualization for my collision. And then I can, instead of rendering the, the model itself, the spaceship itself that I'm using, I can say, okay, the collision will actually be a sphere around the spaceship rather than the spaceship itself. So I'm representing the collision via a different object, a different mathematical object. And if I do that, then, well, hopefully that mathematical object will be simpler than this kind of very complex spaceship model that we have. Or whatever model it is. I mean, even those asteroids that have got like grooves to them or whatever, Clearly a sphere or even an ellipsoid has a smooth surface. So we don't have to worry about all the complexities of all the grooves and ridges within the model. We can just use a mathematical equation and do some intersection tests based on that. The issue, however, with ellipsoids is that uh, the mathematics is definitely not as easy as just doing spheres. So in order to keep this incredibly simple, as a first stab is why don't we just do sphere on sphere so what i did was resized all of the asteroids to be spheres instead of kind of getting those cool oblong shapes that we had before we'll go back to those in time uh, but for now let's actually just get something working on, on something simple why we don't let's not overcomplicate this let's keep it simple get it working get happy with it it might show that there's a few interesting problems that we haven't necessarily thought about yet. So we can solve those problems before getting into the complexities of certain mathematical shapes intersecting with other mathematical shapes. And there's no kind of easy or neat solution for that or the mathematics are quite tough. Let's just keep that part of things simple. Go from there. And then the next thing I thought of was, well, cool. Okay, we've got these shapes. You know, these models that we're using, these kind of balls or spheres that we're using. It's not as nice to do kind of this debugging of what's going on in the world using solid shapes. So the cool thing is in OpenGL, you can actually render all of your geometry using like a wireframe mode. It's very simple to activate. And as long as everything else is working correctly in your OpenGL pipeline or approach, setting this mode on is, is pretty simple. So I decided, okay, cool. What we'll do for our collision shapes is use this mode within OpenGL. And when we come back to it using our normal models, like the spaceship, like the asteroid model, we will go back to using kind of a solid uh, shape. 
And the combination of that could look pretty cool. But just caring about the collisions shapes for now, the, the representation of those collision shapes using these spheres, what would be really interesting is to start thinking about, okay, when an, an intersection actually happens, let's try to visualize what that thing looks like. So what I decided to do was add in an, another entity, another object into the, the world. Uh, which is this kind of additional ball that sits at the edge of the sphere that we control. So the, the, the collision surface for the, uh, for the spaceship. And what that does is when your spaceship is intersecting with another object, this ball will appear at the area of intersection on your spaceship. As you can see, it's clearly not working correctly here. Something's going on, right? This is one of the nice things about doing visualization of your code, what's happening in your code, because you can actually see the error. If we try to do this by like stepping through our code, it would be incredibly difficult to know what's actually going on, just looking at a, like a wall of numbers. Here we can see for sure that there is an issue going on with this intersection code, because it seems like at least on this side of the, the asteroid that we are intersecting too early. But on the other side of the asteroid that we saw earlier, we were intersecting too late. We were already inside the asteroid and we still hadn't been hitting that intersection. So the issue that I was running into there, so it's a pretty interesting one. It may look like compared to each other, they're not moving. But in the game code itself, the velocities of these objects are pretty high because they're kind of flying around the, the planet in, in orbit. So what that means is each of these objects are actually moving at a significant amount per frame. If you do your intersection test as I was doing it in a very naive way, moving one object and then checking for an intersection. The issue that you have there is that the object is moved a whole bunch because it's actually going in orbit, it's moving huge amounts. And the other object hasn't moved yet. So you land up, even if they're moving at the exact same speed, you land up with that object flying into the other object and intersecting. And then you say, okay, cool, now there's an intersection. But then you move the other objects after you've done that to where it was supposed to go. And then you realize actually there wasn't supposed to be an intersection. So you get the situation where the sphere was generating an intersection before it should have generated an intersection or generating way after it should have generated an intersection because actually you're testing against where the, ob the other object was before it moved that frame rather than where it landed up. Now, the issue with doing everything at the end of the frame rather than throughout the frame is that that in effect will allow you to then teleport through objects because now you're only checking your intersections at the end of the frame which means that if the intersection actually happened in the middle of the frame but by the end of the frame the objects are apart again because like one object's going really fast through another object or something like that you don't generate the intersection because the intersection test is only at the end of the frame so Clearly, I'm going to have to do some work in thinking around how to do this uh, in, a, in a manner such that I test the entire movement of an object through a frame. So obviously, the next step, what we actually want to do here is do something with that intersection. So what I decided to do was something very simple, and that is if an intersection occurs, take the spaceship back to the perimeter of the object that it had intersected with and put it exactly on, on that perimeter edge. So if you go flying straight towards an object and the intersection occurs at the end of that frame, it will push in that exact direction that you've inserted into the object. It will push you out to the perimeter in that same direction. So the nice thing about that is it ensures that we always stuck nicely to the surface of that object in question by the end of the frame. So we get this kind of perfect collision look, which is exactly what we're looking for. Clearly, we're going to want this to be better in the sense that, OK, well, at the moment, if you go careening into an object, you just kind of stick onto it. Now, what we might want is something like a bounce or a deflection. One of the things should blow up and be destroyed. But that's down the road, obviously, and, and is kind of not of the concern right now. The issue that we do have when using this approach, though, is that once you fly into an object and now you've been pushed to the surface of that object, if you don't do any movement after that point, you have the issue where although it seems like you should stay on that object going forward, you don't. And the reason for that is 
the gravity that's affecting you is slightly different to the gravity that's affecting the object in question because you're in slightly different locations in the world. And the over time, that starts building up and building up such that you actually start drifting away from the object that you were should have been attached to. So something that we're going to want to do going forward is produce some kind of force that keeps you on that object so that if you quote unquote land on an asteroid, you actually stay on it. And even if that asteroid's rotating, you kind of stay on it while it's rotating. And that's the exact kind of effect that I was, that I'm keen to get to. So the only real thing to add in now is, well, let's just throw it all together. We've got our models. We've got our collision surfaces that we're representing by spheres mathematically, but representing by a ball object or a sphere object in, in a model sense. And what we can do is render the actual models that we're interested in, the spaceship, the asteroid, as the models themselves. But we can overlay that with the collision shapes in a wireframe mode, which I think is quite a cool look. And it's very intuitive as to what's going on. It actually looks like a little bit like a force field vibe, which um, is maybe something we want to come back to when we think about like adding shields or whatever to our ships. That's that's um, definitely something that we may want to think about going forward. But what I've done is also added in the little feature of, OK, why don't we have the ability to turn on or off those collision shapes or the rendering of those collision shapes at any moment so that we can kind of do that on a live basis. We can see what the game looks like from the kind of player's perspective, but then we can also do to see why things may or may not be working by having these different overlays in the game. So one of these overlays could be something like collision shapes. We could have something a little bit more complicated like little beacons or flashing areas which show the different intersection points that you might have between two objects. Now these are all possible approaches that we could use. Clearly I've just gone with something very simple as a starting point. What we have here is a pretty cool situation where the spaceship is landed on the planet and it's quite a nice vibe that I'm getting from this, right? Like you kind of sitting landed on on the planet and you're watching the asteroids kind of spinning around it's kind of like the rings of the planet and that's the kind of exact effect that i want to try capture uh, it's kind of that sense of scale and you can imagine multiple planets flying around and being able to see like the, the rise of a planet as well as kind of asteroid fields and the sun and all that kind of stuff maybe a binary star system that could be pretty cool atmospheres in the planets all that kind of stuff Bring it all together i think that could look awesome and that's not even talking about the actual gameplay itself which haven't really even come on to that's what i wanted to go through today is a bit of simple collision detection clearly super simple keeping it very basic but hopefully we are on the road to actually adding in uh, some cool new features and it also gives a little bit of depth to what we currently have which i quite like I'd really like to know what you guys think about these kinds of voiceovers over these videos rather than just being kind of like a tech demo. And if there's any particular things that you would like me to talk through, maybe show some of the code, that kind of stuff, let me know. And yeah, more than happy to have a try at that and, and see how it goes. But until the next one, guys, take care and see you then.